what I want to ask you to start off with this little session is tell me how many hours in a 24 hour period do you think your babies are going to sleep for in their first year of life? What's the average? Yep, 16. What we're sitting on is round about 11.5 to 14 hours a day. They are going to be in a sleeping environment. Would you ever think about driving around in a car for that long, 14 hours a day, without having the proper seat belt on? without having your child in a car seat? No. 14 hours is a long time and we need to ensure our little ones are in a safe sleeping environment to prevent, to reduce the risk of sleeping accidents and sudden infant death syndrome. So that's what I'm going to talk about today, the importance of it. 20 minutes isn't very long, I know that, but it's so important that you treat this as a priority that you listen to people, that you Google, go onto our website and find out more information. Sids and Kids is an organisation that support families, but we also educate health professionals, getting out the evidence-based information. We developed and we implemented our Safe Sleeping Education Program back in 1991. And since then, there's been over an 80% reduction in the number of little ones dying from either sleeping accidents and SIDS. It's the best result of a public health campaign ever. It works. You need to be aware of these recommendations. If I don't have time to get through it all today, which I won't, we also have a website. So I thought I'd just pop it up so that you can see where to get our information. You can get the general information, but you can also go into safe sleeping and get more information about each different topic. Make sure you're aware and make sure you discuss. You can call us, you can email us to ask us questions. It's important that you understand each recommendation that we go through. More so, it's important that the grandparents, and I have noticed that there are some grandparents around here, so I'm going to go through some of the information for you too. Carers need to be as aware as, aware as you, you yourself. So let's go through to reduce the risk of not only SIDS but sleeping accidents. There are certain things we need to do. We need to ensure our little one has a safe sleeping environment to sleep in. That the cot is away from curtain cords. That there's no mobiles that they can reach up and gather, grab onto. That they can't roll over and reach out and get those power cords of it the night lamp sitting there. Make sure the environment's safe. We're also going to talk today about what is the safest place to sleep your baby in? What is a safe cot? Looking at mattresses, what is the safest mattress to sleep on? It should be firm, well-fitting, clean and flat. Every surface should be firm, well-fitting, clean and flat. Look at the bedding and we'll talk about position as well. So let's go through, what are these simple recommendations? Sleep baby on the back, but why? You need to understand and you need to ensure that the grandparents understand because things have changed over time. Way back, how did we sleep babies? On their side and on their tummy. It's important that you get your carers to understand that now we know back is safest. Keep head and face uncovered. Keep baby smoke free before birth and afterwards. A safe sleeping environment night and day. Sleep baby in a safe cot in the same room. This is more so to do with supervision and also baby being in the same room as you. They can hear your snoring. It keeps their arousal up. They can he hear you turning over. It keeps their arousal up to that point. And also from your point of view, you're more aware of what's happening in their environment. You can react to what's happening to them at that time. And breastfeed babe, we know that breastfeeding is best. So why are we so worried? Why is it a priority, especially when we're asleep? What makes us so vulnerable? Think of yourself. What happens when you go to sleep? Your arousal, your breathing rate, your swallowing rate, you totally relax and you're not as aware of what's going on around you. This is actually accentuated for these tiny little babies and we need to help them 
to be safe in their environment because they can't do it for themselves. If you fall out of bed, you'll wake up and put yourself back in. A little one can't do that. So we have to make sure the sleeping environment is safe for them. Okay, the other thing is behavioural response. As I said, falling out of bed. If they roll over into an environment, which they're all going to do sooner or later and we want them to do, we need to ensure that when they roll over and they're still asleep and in a deeper sleep, that the environment is safe for them to roll over. If there are pillows or soft puffy bedding, they can't roll back, they don't know how to roll back. So we need to do that for them. I want to explain something about SIDS. A lot of people get scared about SIDS. And especially grandparents here today, you're going to say to me, my baby slept on the tummy. What's so wrong with it? My baby's okay. You're going to hear also, after you've had your baby, when that baby won't um, settle and is crying, somebody in your play group might say to you, look, I slept my baby on the tummy and they were fine. What are you going to do? You've heard these recommend recommendations, sleep baby on the back. It's so important that we stick to them and this will make sense. So why is that baby okay on the tummy? But we're saying sleep all babies on the back. Why was this baby okay under the doona or blankets that you found, but this one wasn't? Why were these ones okay in the smoking environment, but these ones weren't? This may explain it a bit more. Sadly, this is the little one in the middle that died from SIDS or from SUDI. For this little one to die, they say it's called a triple theory. There's three main circles around this little one. It's multifactorial, meaning that it's not just one cause, there's different causes that come together like the pieces of a jigsaw. And it's like the spokes of the wheel all coming together and then this little one's more vulnerable. First of all, let's look at the infant. We know by definition it's under one year of age. The peak age being under six months of age. Bring it down even further when they're starting to roll. Bring it down even further that time when they're rolling over for the first time and they may have a little bit of a cold or infection. What we know from all the research coming up to here, that there's certain risk factors. Very few, really, that we can work with. Changing our infant care practice. Tummy sleeping, side sleeping, overheating, the smoking around baby. Carbon dioxide rebreathing is, for instance, if there's a bumper or soft and puffy bedding in there, baby may roll over it may go straight against their airways and they can't breathe, or they may roll near it. Carbon dioxide, we breathe in oxygen, our carbon dioxide, heavy gas hangs around. We rebreathe that carbon dioxide, it can lower our arousal, and with babies being more vulnerable, it can cause issues and an unsafe sleeping environment. What we don't know is why that baby's okay, but that one wasn't on the tummy. We believe it's something inside, something to do with the brain, some causative trigger factor. However, we still don't know what it is and that's where the research is going. But this shows how important our infant care practices are. Spokes of the wheel. We can only cut one and we can prevent this from happening. Can you do anything about the infant being under one? That they've got a cold or infection? No. Can we do anything about this trigger factor? No. But what we can work with to ensure that every baby is safe is to sleep them on their back, head and face uncovered, etc. So that's why it's so important, grandparents. Okay, let's sleep babies on the back. It is the safest place. But what are parents worried about? We know that babies need tummy time, supervised tummy time at an appropriate time when they're alert and awake, not when they're ready to go to sleep. It may be from beginning, when they're very tiny newborn, that it's just over the shoulder, over your arm, over your leg, giving them more and more time supervised on the play mat. So supervised tummy time also helps prevent these little flat pads that everybody will worry about. So sleep them on the back, supervised tummy time is most important. Why are we worried about the tummy time uh, to sleep? is for one reason, we know babies actually can sleep better on the tummy. 
but it doesn't mean it's the safest. They'll go into a deeper sleep on the tummy. You may get more things done around the house, but that doesn't mean it's the safest. Their arousal can go right down, and if they've got that trigger factor, they may not come out, out of that deep arousal. It also increases the risk of the head covering. Remember those photos I had back further? They can be face down for a certain amount of time, they can roll into that head covering. So we can increase the risk of suffocation and overheating. Babies are always going to be hotter on their tummy than on their back. Especially if they've got a cold infection, they're going to be cooler on their back. And it's going to increase the risk of choking. Now I've got this up, but I want to show it so grandparents understand this. Because this is one thing that grandparents especially are worried my baby will choke on the back. Sleep them on the side, am I right? So, three places where babies can sleep, back, side or tummy. And I want you to picture me as your baby on the back and cut me in half. All food and air go down through my mouth, down one tube to round about here. Then it divides into two, the top tube taking the air down to the lungs, the bottom one taking the food down the esophagus to the tummy. If I draw those, there are the two tubes, air and food. At the base here, we have these protective pits. With gravity, where does fluid hang? Up or down in a glass? Always down. So all that snot, saliva, reflux is always going to sit at the lowest area until the sensors here tell us, hey, you've got to swallow, there's too much fluid around here. If I'm going to choke, what does that mean? Fluid goes down the wrong way into my lungs? Look how far that fluid has to travel. Now turn me onto my tummy. We've reversed those tubes, the air going down here the food going down there. Does that make sense, okay? There are those protective pits. Fluid's going to hang with gravity round here. Also, when we're on our tummy, to deeper sleep. If you're in a deeper sleep, what happens to your arousal? What happens to your breathing? What happens to your swallowing? You're not swallowing as many times per minute. So that fluid is hanging around and also building up. Do those protective pits work? and look how far that fluid has to go to go down the wrong way. We're actually safer on our back. Go to the side, the tubes are now like this, quickly. There are those protective pits, there's the fluid, and there's still a higher possibility of the fluid going down the wrong way. So which is our safest position? On the back. So if anybody says to you, won't they choke on the back? You can say, no, I can show you that they won't. Okay, let's quickly go through. Keep head and face uncovered, very important. Babies, if you are going to use blankets, make sure they're tucked in, make sure baby's feet are at the bottom. Make sure they can't grab onto any type of loose bedding to pull it over their face or head. One, it falls across their airways. Two, it increases the overheating factor and they don't have the coordination to get it off. We do not recommend doonas or any type of loose bedding to round about the age of two. Or you may prefer to use a safe baby sleeping bag where there's no chance of that bedding going over their heads. It's important here to also think about the temperature. Room temperature, not everybody has controlled heating and that's okay. What you need to do is keep baby's head and face uncovered so they can regulate their own temperature. Generally think about in this room, we're all comfortable with one and two pieces of clothing. So will your baby. You don't need all that extra bedding. The next thing is no hats, bonnets or hoodies. Never place a baby down to sleep even during the day with a hoodie which could cover their head or when they start to roll, get caught. And also check your baby. Go for the core, either down here or at the back hands or face will always be a bit cooler so you can see that oh yesterday it was 18 degrees i only had one piece of clothing on but today they're hotter what might they be coming down with a cold or infection so we're reacting to what's happening within them as well as to what the temperature is and how they're feeling so always go for that nice infant care practice okay so no pillows no bumpers no soft toys. Why? Because when they start to roll, if they roll into them, we have covering of the airways. This one I'm going to show too because you may see products out there that keep baby in a curved position or in slings, curved positions. 
we need to be careful of placing baby on a pillow or somewhere where they do go into that curved position. Everybody put your chin on your chest and try and breathe through your nose. It's difficult, isn't it? But that's the position we're placing these babies. We're compromising their airways. That's why we say keep them on their back, nice and flat so they can breathe freely. Be very careful. Do not fall asleep on a couch with your babe. It is not a safe sleeping environment. My time's almost up, so I'm going to rush here. But remember the website for more information. See here again, what we're using products for may be different during sleep to what they're doing when they're awake. In a sling on a bouncinette awake, asleep, they're going into that chin to chest position. So be aware of what your babe's doing in that product. Smoke free is so important as we've seen with other talks today. Breastfeed baby. The safest place to sleep your baby is in a safe cot, their own safe sleep environment, next to the parent's bed, which we spoke about earlier. Safe cot. Nobody can sell a cot out there retail unless it meets the current mandatory standard. Look for that. The only products that have a mandatory standard for sleeping a baby in is the cot, household cot. If you're looking at second-hand cots, there were major changes in the standard 2005. So before that, if the cot is that old, don't use them. Okay? And I'll, I can go into more in discussion. Uh, the next one is a portable cot, a great one to use when you're travelling, when you're going to grandparents' houses, etc. And the pram. However, the standard for the pram states never to be used unsupervised or as a permanent place to sleep baby. I have to sneak through these, but I've told you the products. Let's talk about this. Let's go to the website and learn more about these before we use them. If you want to use a bassinet, fine, but just for you to be informed that there's only a voluntary standard. There's a great checklist for you to go through on the um, ACCC website or ours called Keeping Baby Safe, a guide to nursery furniture. Be aware, internet, second-hand cots, entrapment issues, strangulation issues, do not use them. Find out more. Okay, this is the second-hand cot. There are issues and I've got to go through. I cannot say enough. Make sure wherever your baby's going to be minded by somebody else, grandparents, carer, make sure they have safe products and they are sleeping their ba your baby safely as well. So, Making Up Baby's Cot, this is up on our website. Please look at it and go through. Simple. Six clear messages. In depth, go to our website or discuss with us to find out more. Just for those who have got toddlers, on our website too, we have a new brochure called Cot to Bed Safety. When are you going to move your little one out of the cot so that your new baby can come in? Before you do that, you need to be aware of when to move, what to move them to too, and what the environment is like. And there's little hints in there, like if they're in a, a safe sleeping bag, it's time to take them out once they go into a bed or onto a mattress. Okay, so look into that. And that's all I've got time for today.